the next speaker will be Professor Yero from Alto University, and also he worked closely with the University of Health in Key. His topic will be sharing memories of the war on the semantic web, experiences on developing free in use semantic portals, and war sample and the war victim sample 1914 to 1922, and war memory sample. And yeah, we, Iyoro Gyosu-nim, Finland에서 온 교수님이신데, 시멘틱 웹에서 전쟁의 기억을 헤아리다 라는 제목으로 예, 강연을 해 주시겠습니다. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much to the organizers for organizing this event. I'm, I'm really honored to be here presenting this, this work to you. And I guess my main message might be that, that I'm trying to focus on the topic of the Depth Redemption Movement archive from a kind of practical point of view, because we have been working in Finland in related uh, projects, trying to publish memoirs of the Second World War, which is a bit related or analogous problem that you are facing here in Korea with the Depth Redemption uh, Movement archives. So I will first have a few motivating words of the work that we have been doing. Then I will present a kind of practical model and a series of systems that we have developed during the 20 or so past years for publishing cultural heritage content on the, on the semantic web. And then uh, the most important part is probably the three in-use systems that I will be presenting, war sample, war victim sample, and war memoir sample that all try to share memories of the, of the, of the war to the public. Uh, and then finally, questions and answers. So first, some motivating words. I also make reference to Hegel as a Swain, and uh, one quote that he has said is that we learn from history that we learn nothing from history. And I think uh, what we have been trying to create in War Sample, War Sample, and War Memoir Sample is to prove that Hegel was wrong. You can call me a dreamer, but I think that uh, the more we know about the price of the war, the less there will be wars. If Putin only had some kind of, of uh, sense of, uh, of uh, responsibility or, 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 or grief or whatever, uh, I think he would not have uh, invaded Ukraine. Uh, so the next question is how can we do this and, and we, are, we are sort of developing uh, technology for the purpose and, and using linked open data for the purpose and, and the reasons for that we chose this approach is that by using data and linking it, everybody's data uh, gets enriched. So uh, everybody wins by collaboration, by linking data to each other's uh, data silos, so to say. So we don't want to have data silos, but a kind of common view of the cultural heritage. Uh, uh, we also try to uh, increase the value of the data by using fair principles. So we are creating findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data, the well-known principles that are now used in, in many places called fair. And then finally, the idea of linked data is to make the data available for the computers to understand in a way. And, and uh, this is very fundamental, that if we want to make intelligent or usable systems for the public and, and science, scientists, uh, the machine has to understand what kind of data it is dealing with. Otherwise, it's very difficult to make, make any, any useful systems. Uh, I also quote Leonardo da Vinci. He has said, learn how to see, realize that everything connects to everything else. So I, I guess Leonardo was one of the first linked data people <laughs> in the world. At least he understood the importance of linking data. So you know, in a way, we are trying to prove that Leonardo Vinci was right if, if Hegel was wrong. So in, from a practical point of view, I'm, I'm now presenting then the model that we have come by and the series of systems we have been developing. Uh, so here's a line we have, during the 20 years or so, we have been working with about 20 different systems that are now online on the web for people to use. We started with Museum Finland, Finnish museums on the semantic web, on museum collections, culture sample for tangible and intangible cultural heritage in, in all possible ways. 
uh, we do fiction literature uh, with book sample and, war, and then, then uh, we have lots of different biographical systems for publishing biographies of, of people, name sample for toponomastic research, two million place names basically in, in Finland for example, medieval manuscripts, mapping manuscript migrations project, academic sample for Finnish academic people, fine sample of archaeology, letter sample of early modern letters, the Republic of Letters data actually, law sample for Finnish legislation and parliament sample for Finnish parliamentary data. And all, in all these systems, uh, uh, we have been uh, sort of using the same kind of approach, which sort of is very interesting that the uh, linked data idea is its application domain uh, agnostic. It's, it's like a Swiss knife that you can use in different kind of applications because the, the semantics that, we, that the, the semantic web provides does not make any commitment to a particular application domain. So you, that makes it very, very general uh, system. The name Sampo in these systems comes from the Finnish epic Kalevala, where, where Sampo is something mythical that gives its own riches and good fortune. And, and the most common interpretation of this is that, that Sampo is a metaphor of amazing ancient technology. So from the war sample series, we are focusing on three particular cases, war sample, war victim sample, and, and war memoir sample. And some of these systems have been very popular, actually, although they are research prototypes that we have created. For example, book sample now maintained by the Finnish public libraries had last year, they tell two million users, which is quite a lot since in Finland we have 5.5 million people, so <laughs> everybody <laughs> seems to be using it. Uh, well, it's one of the major portals that they have. And, and Warsamp also has, has broken the one million users uh, limit now, so, so it's, it's very popular. People really want to remember and, and share, share uh, information about the, the, the victims of, of war in this case. So basic model that we have here uh, that uh, is on the, on the left, the sample model. So the red circle here is a sample, and then outside the sample, uh, we have different content providers like museums, archives, media, citizens, and so on. And, and in the core, we have the national data and ontology infrastructure. And, and the idea is that, that when these different data providers provide information, they annotate the metadata by using this shared ontology infrastructure, which means that when they put their own thing into the sample, it's automatically linked to other contents there through the network. This means that their own data gets automatically enriched by everybody else's data, and at the same time, the data of the other providers also gets enriched by the linking to the new piece of information in the sample. So this is a business model that where everybody can, can win. And, and, and this, is, this has turned out to be very, very sort of useful for arguing people to participate in, in this kind of, kind of efforts for creating these samples. All the data is then published in the Linked Data Finland service that we have created. And, and the idea there is that we separate from a technical point of view completely the data service from the application layer. This makes things easy and it makes also the data much more sustainable because, because if somebody else wants in a later times, after tens of years, for example, use the data, he or she can just use the data and, and, uh, and the data sort of survives much better than, than a combination of, of data and application. Applications are, are, do not live so long in general. So the idea is to use only Sparkle uh, uh, API here, that's a common query language in semantic web, and we use it two ways. We are creating these portals, practical applications for everybody to use without any programming skills, but also the digital humanities people with some modest programming skills can use the sample data by using different tools like Google Colab, Jupyter Notebooks, or Yaskui Editor, and so on. So, so that's a sort of, the, the, if you know something about programming, you can, you can use the data for data analysis and your research. Uh, in, in very flexible ways. So the model in, in principle has uh, six, or the model is including six principles. Three principles for creating the linked open data services and then six principles, uh, sorry, <laughs> three principles for creating portal interfaces. And, and the principles for lot services are support collaborative data creation, publishing, user shared ontology, infrastructure, and make clear distinction between the linked open data service and the user interface. 
and the principles for creating user interfaces are provide multiple perspectives to the same data, standardized portal usage by a simple filter analyze two-step cycle. I will show some examples. And then we are, the idea is that we support data analysis and knowledge discovery in addition to data exploration. So, so these tools that we are creating, they are really, really also meant for, for research in a deeper sense, not only for finding things from archives, but analyzing the content and the underlying history that, uh, that the archives represent. So let's move on then to the uh, three uh, uh, sample systems. First, World Sampo finished World War II on the semantic web. So the historical background of this system is that in, in 1939, Stalin attacked Finland after Hitler's and Stalin's Rippentrop agreement uh, just suddenly. So it was, it was, it was very, very much surprised then. So it started the Winter War and then the other, other wars related to Second World War. So this is actually exactly what now has happened to uh, Ukraine as Putin attacked it there. So, so the Russians just decided that this is our territory and, and then come, uh, come with guns across the, the border. Uh, the key ideas then, then from a point of view of end users here is that we actually, what we are trying to, or trying to do here we are trying to reassemble the life stories of all fallen Finnish soldiers in this war by data linking. So we have lots of different archives, different data sets that describe the war and people involved there. And, and the idea is that when we have these people, 100,000 people there, we, we really try to find out what happened to them and, and sort of reconstruct automatically their life stories, narratives. And of course, this means that, that the idea there fundamentally is to preserve and share the memory of the dead to the relatives, friends, and the Finnish nation in, in the large. And, and now that we have created it, it's also turned out that it's a very useful data set for, for digital humanities research. So war historians can, be used, can use it for analyzing, analyzing uh, different data sets about the war. The original uh, linked data sets that we used are listed here. So we have th 13 different sets, we have the casualties of the war as a kind of core data uh, from national archives. Then we have lots of war diaries from national archives and, and 160,000 photogra authentic photographs from the fronts. We have veteran article memoirs of the war, thousands of those. Uh, then we have a geo information about the places in, in the annexed part of, of Finland uh, and border time maps and historical maps from other sources. And uh, then uh, we have also biographies about the wartime persons. When the person is very, very prominent, we have actually biographies about, about him or her. And then, then we also create an ontology of the events, the narrative of the events. So about 1,000 major military and political actions in, in, in a timeline. And other information. And then what we constructed was this linked open data cloud or, or infrastructure of, of different uh, sort of uh, things there. So the most important part is probably the events. We have all, all, over half a million events that took place during, during the war times. We have lots of persons, death records, prisoner records, articles, military units, 15,000. So it is actually, actually quite a mess from, from a computational point of view. 26,000 original war diaries that, that the soldiers were writing there, and places, occupations, over 2,000 different occupations. This was also so astonishing find that there are so many occupations <laughs> that these people had, and so on. And this, it's integrated also uh, to the international linked open data cloud. So this is actually one bubble in the Lord Cl international Lord cloud officially, the war sample data. Uh, uh, the data model, I won't go into details here, but the idea is, is to use events as a semantic clue of everything. And, but we also use document-based metadata, Dublin Core, for some, some, some data. And, and uh, the lesson that we learned here that actually there is no one solution typically. But you have to have different kind of metadata models or duplicate metadata models for the same thing. For example, death records are very natural to represent as a Dublin Core uh, records. But on the other hand, then we need the events. So we actually automatically generate from Dublin Core uh, records, for example, the events of being killed or being wounded uh, or doing something else that, that we can find in the, in, the, in the death records. 
So we use multiple ways. There is no one solution. Key challenges, data production and maintenance. I think this is, this is really hard. Uh, when you have a huge network, like, like 14 million different, different triples in, in one, one knowledge graph, and, and then something changes, or you want to, want to add another other piece of information there, then, then you have to be very careful and, and make, think very, very thoroughly how to do it technically, so that, so that uh, the database or knowledge, knowledge graph, the quality stays as it is, so you don't want to introduce any errors there, or, or some broken links, or something like that. So we need reputable pipelines, and, and, and we are working on, on this issue still. But uh, anyway, I think we've got very encouraging results. We have now the portal there. It has been there actually already for seven years, uh, and uh, uh, had over a million users. We have got some international prices of it, and, and it, it's pinned off also war speaking sample and war memoir sample, so it was a start for us to do several war historical systems. For more information you can go to this site and, and you can also of course find the link to the, to the real thing on the web if you want. And here are some, some pa papers, there are lots of more papers. There are, for example, five master's theses were made when developing the first version and, and, and one PhD work and, and other PhD works are coming that are using the, the sort of uh, results from, from these projects still. But let's move on to the next system. This is a kind of little brother of war sample. Here we focus on the Finnish civil war and, and related kindred wars. Uh, the idea was, was actually to uh, uh, use the sample model or poor sample model to the victims' data of the civil war that, that we uh, achieved uh, from, from national archives of, of Finland. And it, it turned out that people are still looking for data about the fallen predecessors 100 years ago. So even if these things happened, happened a long time ago, like, like the depth redemption movement, people are still very interested in, 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 in finding out relatives. And, and what happened to them. Uh, from a research point of view, we, trans we tested a new Sampo UI tool for the interface design and, and, and the idea of integrating very closely uh, data analytic tools with search and exploration. And we also, also sort of uh, created models for representing provenience data from multiple sources, because in this case we got information from different sources about the fallen, and, and sometimes the, the information was conflicting. So, so we had to Im, have to sort of represent all po possible views to the data. We, because we didn't know, and, and it's not possible to find out what is the right or the truth in some cases. Uh, actually, in, in what we are aiming at in this system is a kind of paradigm shame, change in, in publishing uh, humanities data. So if you, I think that we can uh, uh, find four different generations in publishing humanities data. First there were engraved stones and printed texts, and then came online systems for searching and exploring, and this is still the up-to-date sort of systems are typically only for searching and exploring. But what we are up here is, is to publish the data as linked data, with tools for digital humanities research. So, so we moved up from, from only publishing to human readers, the data to, to data publishing. And, and, uh, and one next step after this then would be to use AI tools for automatic uh, knowledge discovery. So the idea there is that in this fourth generation, uh, the machine could perhaps automatically find out interesting patterns of knowledge in the data and, and propose the human user some research uh, questions and also help in solving the research questions by using these AI techniques and even, even explaining the results. So the original system that, that we, we sort of started to make better was a very traditional one. So you have a, basically you have a form here you would like to find some fallen person from, from the archives. So you, for example, tell what is his, his uh, last name and, and where he lived, things like that. Typical, typical form used in databases today. And, and then, then you find out a result set here. For example, in this case, I, I, was, I was looking for Mr. Kula and, and found out there are actually, actually five different persons with the same name. Uh, but I'm interested in this Toivokula, and, and then I can select here the link, 
And, and then I would get the metadata about the person. Very, very typical system. Very rich metadata here as well. And uh, the problem here is that this is for human consumption. The data cannot be, it's there, but you cannot reuse it. And, and we wanted to change that and, and create something much more useful for the, for the public. So here's the first landing page of the new system that we created. Uh, it has two application perspectives uh, as desired on the SAMPO model. So, so you can zoom in into the data through the uh, for, uh, 42,000 deaths, people who were killed during the civil war, war, civil war. And then we also integrated to the data, the database of the battles that took place during the uh, civil war. So there are 1,200 different battles that we know something about. And then by clicking on this window, like this, then you, then you can find out more about the, the death. And, and the idea in our system is, is to use a kind of san, standard way of, of getting more information. You have a semantic faceted search here. We have, in this case, we have 22 different facets from the metadata, like, like when the guy was born, when he was dead, uh, whether he was red or white, uh, what's his profession, whether he was man or woman, and so on. And by making selections from the facets, you will get the result set here. And then when you have filtered out a result set, for example, you're interested in red that were born in, in, in northern Finland, for example. Then you get the result set here. Then you can ac access, you have access to different uh, visualization and data analytic tools here as tabs. And if I click here, then I will, will get some kind of visualization of the results. So, so for example, here, here, here the results are visualized as a table, that's a default visualization. But then, then you can also, also visualize it as, as a kind of pie. And in, in this case, for example, I'm interested in, in, the, in the sort of uh, proportions of the uh, counties where these people that I have filtered out were killed. And, and you can see, for example, that this, this particular county is the most common place of getting killed <laughs> in this case. Then I can also click on the, on the, on the uh, other, other visualization where you can, can see the deaths on a timeline. So you can see, for example, in this case that I have not filtered anything out. There are still, still quite a lot of dead people here uh, that, that most of the killings were done. Uh, or the age of, actually this is about the visualization of the age of the killing. So you can see that most of them were about 20 years old. And you can select here what, what the parameter you would like to see on the timeline in the same way. And then the final, finally we have also, also map-based visualization where you can see where these people were killed. And, and you can zoom in and then when you click, for example, this marker, you will find the nine different people who were killed in this place. And more information, of course, about the, the, the persons. So the other, in the other, other uh, sort of uh, application view from the landing page, the, the battles view, if you go there, you will find a similar kind of filter-based system for analyzing the battles. But, but uh, one interesting uh, thing that we did there was actually a kind of animation of the killings. So in this case, since we know who was killed where at the moment, you, you can run on animation here in this address if you go there. And, and, and as the time goes by, uh, the killings are shown as red, red uh, circles. And you can really see, see how, the, how the sort of killings and battles started from this area here, and then they gradually move to, to here, where the, where the war, civil war finally ended. So in this, this moment, for example, which is, which is mi in the middle of March, you can see that actually the, the first battles are on this front line here. So these red circles here show where people, most people are killed at the moment. So it's all kinds of... Uh, interesting sort of visualizations and analytics can be done by using this kind of data. There are also many papers available, for example, these two about this, this uh, system. Then finally, war memoir sample, video interviews of Finnish World War veterans. So this is also a way of sharing the sort of experiences and, and, uh, and uh, views of war. And in, in case, this case, 
we, we were able to use the war sample infrastructure. This is, we know all the places, events that took place in, in the Second World War. We could reuse the knowledge graph there and build on top of that this new system of videos, video memoirs. The idea is to archive and share video memoirs of the World War to veterans to the next generations. So we, which, well, the challenge is that, that we uh, addressed here is how can you search inside a long interview video. So, so if, if a person mentions some other person or some place in the, in the middle of a two hour long video, how can you find the place where this interesting piece of, of, of uh, uh, talk is found? And, and then how can we en ex enhance the watching experience of the videos by providing contextual information to the video? As, as the video is, is shown. And as a case study, we used then, then uh, these war memoir videos of, of uh, national archives. The solution was to use the sample model and, and extend it to video viewing. Uh, we, we made an automatic knowledge graph creation system from textual video transcripts and faceted search and browsing uh, as, as in, in the war sample system, for, but for video scenes at the moment. And then, then we provide the context or linking when, when somebody is viewing the videos. And uh, this is sample model and, and the sample UI framework in action in another kind of application domain again. So the idea there is that, that we got actually the video interview so that uh, the interviewer had, had already told us what, what the interview viewer view is, is actually saying at what point. So we could actually pick Excel sheet telling, telling with timestamps what is happening basically in this, this uh, time frame of the video. And then we got the videos, and, and we, we published the videos as in YouTube uh, after some editing of there. And then from these textual descriptions, we created automatically, fully automatically, a linked data cloud here, a Sparkle endpoint, basically. That was then interlinked and enriched by data from the knowledge graph of Warsampo and Wikidata and Wikipedia. And then, then we, on top of that, we killed using the Sparkle endpoint and Sparkle, the war memoir, sample, uh, war memoir sample portal that you can use in this address now. I, I think I skipped this. Perhaps also this, since I guess I'm, I'm running out of time. But this, uh, the, the main challenge, technical challenge here is how to extract from textual descriptions the knowledge and the entities that are mentioned there and, and uh, map them then to the knowledge graph of a war sample. So, because names and place names are, are very sort of ambiguous and, and you have to really, really, really think of that, how, how, how it can be done. And how can you interlink the different schemes in different videos with each other? So it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a handful of job, but, but we were able to do it and, and we extracted the name entities and automatically also ontological keywords describing the content of the, of the video schemes uh, by using the different kind of natural language processing tools that were available. And the final, final thing here is then a knowledge graph representing the schemes in terms of the Finnish ontology infrastructure and, and interlinking between the different schemes by, by entity, entity linking. You know, if you want, you can use 10 more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon? You can, you can use 10 more minutes. 10? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, yeah, so, so let's have a look how it then looks, you, and you can go, go, go to this site. It, it's online, it's in use, used by thousands of people already. Uh, so in this case, we have three different application perspectives to, to, to the data, as, as, as sort of suggested by the sample portal. So we have a, a view uh, for searching full, uh, full interviews. And the most important part is here in the middle, uh, you can search for, for the schemes that take place inside the videos. So you can zoom in into the videos uh, more, more accurately. And then finally, we have a, have, a, have a semantic index here where we have indexed everything in the, in the, in the, in the video schemes semantically. So that it's a basically like, like a book index, but by clicking, clicking on that, you will find the semantic pieces of information that, that sort of uh, uh, are present in, in some video scene. Here are some example videos then that, that, that such, just that people can, if, if you don't want to use any search, you can just click here and, and hear what the veterans are speaking. And when you go to the first, 
the, the sort of the skin search part, which is the most important one. Then, then again, you have the sample model here. So the user interface is, is exactly like in a war victim sample uh, that you have here on the on the west on the on the left hand side. You have uh, ten facets for semantic searching. So you here, for example, text based search. Uh, here's the uh, the person who has been interviewed uh, and place of interviewing, uh, not that, that place of, of what happened, where there happened, some, some skin here. And I have selected here a person, from a person a facet, uh, one person, one, one general, Mannerheim, which is the, probably the most, most gen, uh, known, best, best known general in the war, in the, in the, in the war, yes. So, so here you have a list of all persons that, that appear in the, in, the, in the videos, are mentioned in the videos. And then you have here, here, uh, the unit of, of uh, when, when, they, when they make mentions about units of war, uh, military units, and here, here are some organi other organizations mentioned in the videos, and, uh, and here is, uh, this, this refers to uh, some, for example, military equipment like Stuka, the, the fighter, and, and stuff like that. So they are named entities that we have extracted from, from, the, from, the, from, the, uh, from the data. And then, uh, when, you, when you make here, I have, for example, selected here Carl uh, Gustav Mannerheim, the general, and, and found out that there are 40 different schemes in these videos where they speak about him. And, and the, then, the, when I click here, then the result set will include only the four, 40 different uh, schemes out of thousands of schemes in the, in the database where Mannerheim is mentioned. And, and the results are presented again here by default default as a, as, a, as a table. And then, as, as in other sample systems as well, you have here on top different tabs by which you can, you can investigate the, the result in, in other ways. And then, if I select here one particular video, then, then you can start watching the video. So, for example, I have, I have selected here one video, and, uh, and, and uh, it's, it comes from YouTube here. And, and then, when I click here and I start the YouTube video, the video starts running, and, and on, the, on the right hand side you will, you will see the, the contents of the video script uh, dynamically. So when the video goes on, you will see what, what, the sort of, what are the, the, the notes of the interviewer about this video at that particular point. And at the same time, the system automatically tells, for example, what places are mentioned here in this skin, what persons are mentioned, what, what units are mentioned. Uh, what, what events are mentioned here. And, and these are all links, so that while you watch the, the video, then you can stop it and, and, and click a link here, and then you get more contextual information about, about the, the, the concept that appears in this part of the video, in this text. Uh, it's also possible to view the whole video as a word cloud to get some kind of uh, summary of, of the whole video, what kind of terms are, are there. Uh, and, and you can also, also see related map places on maps. So, for example, if I click here, one of these things, that is Vipuri, one of the cities that were involved in this war, then, then you actually are, are, are driven to, to, a web, to the home page of Vipuri in, in Warsampo infrastructure. And what you get in, in Warsampo automatically is, is information about what events took place in Vipuri, uh, what uh, memoirs in the magazines have been published uh, by the magazine that we included here that tell about Vipuri, and then you have uh, different kind of uh, photographs, authentic photographs that were taken in the place. And, and so I can click any of those and, and then you will have more information. So for example, uh, if I click here you can see actually what is, what is linked there. So you have, have the original memoir articles here from Vipuri. Then you have a list of different events that took place in Vipuri. Different, for example, killings there or, 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 or other political or bombings or something like that. And then you have lots of, lots of uh, photographs taken there. And if I go to see photographs then, then uh, okay, there's also a place all, all places mentioned in the skin, you can also, also approach the sort of skin by, by on the map, so that you can see that, that in this video, for example, the interview view 
uh, mentions these places and then if you click here then you have access to that place information as well so it's, it's very versatile way of sort of browsing the data but if, if you go to the to the uh, video thing I think uh, where are these okay perhaps they are not in this set of slides but basically you, you have the video the for example the photographs there and, and you can see actually that there are quite a few photographs uh, authentic photographs from the video and, and you can you can then by clicking one photograph you can go and see another photographs and so on so all the photographs are in, interlinked as well there yeah so this is actually actually uh, the if you are interested in the places mentioned in the scheme and you click another button here and, and then you will, will have a, a kind of picture of, of what places this person is, is sort of memorizing during the interview here. And this is on, just an example of, of the key cloud, keyword cloud, the ontological keyword cloud. So that, that if you want to have, find out what this guy is, is telling in the whole two hour video interview, you can get a kind of summary of what kind of uh, things he's telling in terms of these keyword ontologies. <laughs> And then finally, there's a semantic index, the third view of, of, the, of, the, of the portal, uh, where we basically just provide a list of everything that is mentioned there. And if you click, for example, the second brigade uh, here, then you will get information about the second brigade of the Second World War. And you can also find, find people who, who, whose interview this is, and you can also find the, the place of, of, uh, of places of, of uh, interview where he mentioned. These, these places or these, these concepts that are listed here. So it's a kind of, kind of semantic index, uh, a kind of extension of, of ordinary indices used in, in, in books, for example. And here are also papers if you're interested in more details about the technology, uh, the natural language processing part, and, and so on. You can find these papers in our website. So this is a team who were working, working there. We, we worked closely with National Archives of Finland, who were sort of, sort of providing the videos, for example, and, and, and cleaning up, up the, the inter, interview sort of texts before we started to, started to sort of uh, compile the practical application. Also, also in, in work, very important, and actually most important part was the veteran organizations in Finland who provided and made the videos during, during 10 or 20 years in this archive. So that's, of course, the most important part, because everything is, is built on top of that, that work of sharing the memories of the, of the soldiers. More information about each system can be found here. So there's war sample homepage, war victim sample homepage, war memoir sample homepage. There are, there are videos and, and publications and more information links to the actual portals in these pages and about the whole series of sample portals you will find information in this page and, and we have, a, we have a, our own all publications something like 500 publications related to the linked data work and, and the sample portals can be found in this this address most of them are available as pdfs we, we try to only some in some cases we, we we couldn't do that because of the copyright issues like a book you cannot just put the book on the, on the web <laughs> otherwise you are in trouble thank you <laughs>